on today's episode of how not to build a fabricated axle housing. Okay, here we go. It is a Tuesday night. Decided I wanted to come out here and uh, mess around with this thing. So at the last, at the at the end of the last video, I was talking about uh, being excited to get these fab fabricated housings, or the fabricated housing that I've already done for the rear, put underneath this thing, and uh, wanted to start mocking up suspension figuring out links, link lengths, a little bit of suspension geometry. So anyway, what I've done, what I did over the weekend, I didn't have a whole lot of time to work on this thing over the weekend. Uh, matter of fact, I didn't work on it at all over the weekend. So, but what I did in a few hours I had was I took this fabricated housing that I had built. Um, I built this thing about uh, three years ago. Uh, I'll see if I can find the pictures from when I uh, first started building these. But basically what it is, it's a nine inch, or it will also take a, a 10, inch, 10 inch ring gear, but it's a, a DIY design that I downloaded off the internet. And I thought, you know, everybody's got these really fancy fabricated housings. I thought, well, I've got a plasma table, I got a press brake. And uh, so I'll go ahead and build a couple on my own, do it all here in the shop. And so what I did was I had the, I had the face where the third member bolts up to. I had that uh, laser cut so that it would be 100% on the money. Those of, those of you that have been around CNC plasma tables, you know that it's, it's not great at doing small holes. So I had those laser cut. I got uh, two of them laser cut. And I did the rest of the parts here in the shop with my, you know, Harbor Freight style swag off-road press brake. And um, I also, in that process, I downloaded a design for an axle jig to build the axle in, um, where you go ahead and you add the, add the tubes and it, it's in a jig. I'll put a picture in here if I can find it. But that was before I had this fixture bar. So I don't know if I want to put all this in the video, but I guess it doesn't matter. I've, I've never built a set of fabricated housings before. I really didn't know what I was getting into, but I downloaded, uh, I downloaded the design. I built this fixture jig that uh, you can download as a design with it. I had it press braked or press broke, CNC laser cut, and... Uh, I went ahead and built this rear housing with um, a backbone truss and I welded it out. Getting back to this, I'm rambling. I was going to put these eight inch or these uh, eight inch fabricated nine inch housings that I built under that buggy, Striker One. Long story short, the fabricated housings I decided to save for Striker Four and in the process of doing this, I, like I already said, I downloaded the design, I cut all the parts, I put the shells together, and then I built this axle fixture jig and welded uh, the tubes in. And I decided the weight on the front, this is a center section for the front, um, I decided the weight on the front until I knew exactly what buggy I was gonna be putting it under whether I had a passenger or driver drop transfer case. While I was building these uh, Dana 60 axles, I uh, acquired a axle fixture bar. So um, the fixture bar, you throw through the axle housing, you turn down pucks. These pucks go in 
the um, you have a set of pucks that go into the carrier, which are in here in the center section, and then you usually have a set of outer pucks. And the outer pucks are turned down or made to the diameter of whatever you're putting them in, whether in this case, these outer pucks are built for the unit bearing pocket. So these go down in here. Unit bearing pocket goes on the end of the axle housing. These go into the unit bearing pocket. And what it does is just, it gives you a reference point to keep everything aligned. Um, if you happen to be shortening, widening, or welding on the axle housing, it gives you a reference and, and keeps everything as true as possible while you're, while, at least while I did it, while I was welding on the axle housing, I would rotate the alignment bar and make sure it wasn't binding up. Um, now, all that being said, long story short, I built these axle, this axle housing before I had the alignment bar. And now that I have the alignment bar, I went ahead and turned down the pucks on the lathe for the nine inch center section. And I threw the alignment bar in and guess what? The axle housing is not straight by any stretch of the imagination. Basically, I think what happened is, well, I know what happened is I put too much heat in the tubes here when I was welding on this backbone truss and it pulled the tubes back. Um, this side is not, it's kind of hard to see. This side is not as bad as the other side. The other side is quite a bit worse. And uh, maybe the better reference would be the reveal on the puck. You can see how off-centered it is. Um, it's pulled to the back. It should be, the, the tube itself should be that way more. So, what am I gonna do? Um, put a bunch of work into this housing and I don't know if it's, uh, I know it's not straight. I don't know if it's salvageable. Um, I, I posted up on Instagram in my stories, hey, is this, should I try to straighten this or is this a boat anchor? And I got a lot of encouraging comments about how I should go ahead and try to straighten it. And I think probably the first step is to cut this backbone truss, especially on that end, and add some heat to the tube maybe, and cool it down and see if I can get it to pull back in line. Um, to me, this is, this is all an experiment. I don't know if it's gonna work. Building these from scratch on my own here in the shop was, a, was an exper uh, experiment in the first place, so um, I don't know. I'm, I was sort of inclined just to go ahead and scrap them and buy some fabricated housings, even though I really wasn't planning on doing that. Um, I want them to be right. So this video is not gonna be so much probably about the chassis as it is about me trying to get this uh, housing straightened out. If I can get this housing straightened out, then I'll go ahead and take this other center section that I built and build it out and, uh, and move on from there. If I can't get this housing straightened out, um, I'll probably just buy a couple of fabricated housings from Trail Gear or Rough Stuff or one of the big box brands and, uh, and do it that way. So um, for the front housing, for the outers, I went this week and I picked up a good use set of uh, Spider Tracks Inner Seas, Pro Series Inner Seas, and Knuckles. So um, that's the plan for the front housing. Um, so, yeah, was a little bit discouraged about this axle housing, but uh, sort of to be expected because I didn't have all the proper tools um, to build it. Or maybe. I think I had all the proper tools, but you know, I was naive to know, naive to the fact that this thing was gonna pull um, back as far as it, as it could. And 
actually, if I can get it to work by just taking this backbone truss off, that wouldn't hurt my feelings. Anyway, here we go. Okay, on today's episode of how not to build a fabricated axle housing, uh, it's a couple days later now. I went ahead and um, I cut a section out of the truss on both sides. So the truss, this is the side that's that's uh, bowed up pretty good. So the truss went to, so the truss went to right about here. Um, I cut it back to just over here and um, what I've got what I'm doing now is I've got the axle on jack stands I've got this end chained down to my little fixture table here this it's a half inch plate I've got a jack on this side I'm trying to push it upward because whenever I I welded this truss on it it shrunk and and bowed it back this way um, I've been on Instagram posting pictures to my stories, asking questions. People have been really helpful. Um, that's, it's so awesome. Anyway, yes, what I do need is ideally I need a big wide flange I-beam that I can put this, this setup on. Um, because what's happening is, is when I'm jacking this end up, it's actually bowing the half inch, um, plate on this little fixture table so um i do need something a little bit stiffer but i also think i need to add a little bit more heat to the tube to get it to relax and um, i'm not i don't want to add a bunch of heat but i need to add enough to get i guess the molecules or whatever you want to call it in the steel to expand a little bit and relax because as you know with welding on the back side when you get that, put all that heat in there and then it cools down, it shrinks and pulls. And, and that's exactly what's happened to this axle housing. Um, so the build your own axle housing um, experiment continues. And I think this axle would be perfectly usable if I can get it straight. Um, there's some nice welds on here. Um, I, you know, I spent a bunch of time getting this, uh, getting this axle built. And, uh, so I think it's only right to give it a, give it a, a thorough try to get it straight before I, before I ditch the whole thing. So here we go.
Okay, so here's the thing. I opened a beer and started thinking about this. So obviously I put the bar and everything back in here. I was pretty discouraged earlier, but I've got, I've only got four studs in the face of the third member here. And I have, this is a double thick piece of paper. This is an old hunting license that I found in that toolbox that I bought. These studs are tight, but I can slide this paper underneath here. And that's the direction that I need this, this thing to go. The other thing is, is if I pull this bar down just ever so slightly, of course now it won't do it. There. I can get the, I can get the puck in there. And I can turn the bar just barely, but there's quite a bit of resistance. So I wonder if I weld my link tabs on here. If, if that's going to be just barely enough and then in, also with a combination of sucking these down, I don't know. Just thinking out loud. Okay, so I put all the studs in except for one. For some reason I'm missing one. I don't know where they all went. But um, I can still slide paper under here and I got these things pretty tight. So I think it would behoove me to get this thing just machined, take it somewhere where they could just face this off. Uh, but I'm able to get this, I can, I've got the puck in there and I can turn it and there's some resistance. Um, but um, it's not just like sliding right in or sliding right out. I just gotta put a little pressure on the end of the bar to get it in and out. There you go. Out. In. 